Welcome to my Switching Routing and Wireless Essentials course. This should be the CCNA version 7 curriculum. This is the second of three courses. Module 16, Troubleshooting Static and Default Routes. So, we're doing two main things in this uh, lecture. We're talking about packet processing with static routes and troubleshooting IPv4 specific static and default route configurations. So jumping right on in, 16.1 packet processing with static routes. We've already looked at what static routes are and how they work and how they function. So the process is if a uh, IP address comes in and it matches the static route. For example, here we have R1 sending data. It will use the static route to identify the next hop IP or the exit interface. If it doesn't match, the router will use this default static route. If it doesn't match after that, it drops the packet. So it tries to match a known route first. Then it will use a static route and then it drops it if all else fails. So assuming router 1 matches the routing table entry, it will forward it out either to the next hop or the, out the exit interface, depending on how it is configured. Router 2 will accept it and process it following the same three guidelines. Is it in the routing table? Is there a static route? If not, drop. It will always follow those three options. If router 2 has a default route forwarding uh, network traffic to R3, it may send an ARP request to verify the MAC address of the next hop. So how do we troubleshoot this? Well, networks fail all the time. It could be a bad interface card, it could be a bad cable, it could be uh, an ISP or a network provider dropping connections, it could be that you're sending too much data. My favorite is, it could also be that you messed up at configuring it. That happens a lot. So we need to know some basic commands like ping and trace route, show IP route, show IP interface brief, show CDP neighbors. These are really good show commands. These are also really good commands, ping and trace route, non-show commands, to verify connectivity. So if we're looking at connectivity between PC1 and PC3, we can see if there are static routes available. We can uh, see if there is ways to forward traffic. Maybe we need to add a static route to solve an issue. Maybe we need to allow other content to be there. So the nice thing is, normally with troubleshooting, it's going to be looking at what we know, looking at what we think we configured, verifying that we configured what we think we actually configured, and then trying to solve the appropriate problems. Troubleshooting is probably one of the hardest skills because it takes time, resources, and energy. The nice thing is we have a few labs to walk us through how to do this. This is the last module. It was pretty straightforward because part of it's all about troubleshooting and understanding their process. So we have two main labs and again we looked at kind of understanding how the router will take a, a packet coming in and the three-step process. Again understand that that three-step process is a requirement, like you need to know it. It will look for a matching route in the route table. It will look for a default route. It will drop the packet. Those three things you need to know. That's all for this uh, module. Questions, concerns, reach out. Thank you.